Phosphorus is one of the primary plant nutrients, playing several important roles in raising a successful crop. In order to perform these roles effectively, it is critical to keep phosphorus in balance with other soil nutrients. Phosphorus helps with root development in the plant, and this is critical to provide the best possible root system that that plant can get. It's going to use that root system to bring in other nutrients, but it's also going to use that to take in water and help with overall standability of the crop. We look at phosphorus from it being the sex element of the plant. It's important all the way from beginning to end. It's also one of the most important nutrients that we look at from a cost factor. It's one of the nutrients guys spend a lot of money on. One of the issues that we have in there is phosphorus doesn't typically move in the soil. So proper placement is going to be key to maximizing our opportunity and our return on investment. Phosphorus is one of those nutrients that it's critical that we get it applied up front and early in the season. That's going to help get the root system off to an early start, but also the plant's going to utilize the majority of its phosphorus early in its life cycle. The important part about phosphorus is the fact that plants primarily take phosphorus up in orthophosphate form. We have to convert it to the orthophosphate form before the plant can utilize it. The problem with orthophosphate is also it's the most chemically reactive. If I have a lot of cations, calcium and magnesium, that can tie up that phosphorus and make it unavailable to the plant. If I can minimize the amount of cations that that phosphorus is going to come in contact with, but put it close enough that the plant can take it up, we have a better efficiency and we can get by with lower amounts of phosphorus applied. They're in turn uh, increasing our return on investment. Phosphorus is one of those nutrients that really doesn't move, but it's very critical to make sure that we're placing that in a way that we're not gonna get any negative environmental effects. We also need to make sure we're using protected forms of phosphorus that have less environmental impact, less of it's gonna get in through that soil profile and those waterways and have negative effects. If we have really high levels or excess levels of phosphorus, that can negatively affect that zinc availability. And in those situations, we need to either make sure that we're managing that from the soil end, or we need to make sure we're adding some additional zinc into our fertility program to offset that negative effect. So one of the key components about phosphorus is even though you have a lot of phosphorus in your soil, there's certain temperatures that the phosphorus isn't available, as available as uh, others. So one of the things that we talk about is a starter band or a pop-up type of fertilizer. Even though I've got ample amounts of phosphorus in the soil, Sometimes I need just that immediate early availability of that phosphorus to maximize that crop's potential for yield at the end of the year. It's important to get that crop off to a good start, but the good start can actually come at the end and having a drier crop at the end of the season and a better finish. We've talked about a lot of different aspects of a soil test from CEC all the way through phosphorus now. For more information on any of these, visit agroliquid.com.